work based on the National Curriculum level descriptors. And we're going to start level 7 here on shape and space. To be able to prove that the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. There are several ways of doing this. I'm going to choose this particular method. Any triangle, and we label it with the angles A, B, C. We then draw a line which is parallel to that line there and continue this line here. Now this does assume that we know that the angles on a line add up to 180. Whenever you do a proof there must be some information that you assume you already have. So we're going to assume that we do know that the angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. And also the properties of parallel lines. We're going to assume that we have the properties of parallel lines at our fingertips. So we're going to use the two facts. The angles on a line add up to 180 degrees and our knowledge of parallel lines. Because this angle A equals this angle E because they are called corresponding angles. We also have that this angle B equals this angle F because they are called alternate angles. So we now have that C, F, E, C plus F plus E equals 180 because they are the angles on a straight line. And because we have that these angles are equal, then that must equal angle A plus B plus C adds up to 180. This plus this plus this is 180 because this equals this and this equals this. These three must add up to 180. One way of proving the angles of a triangle add up to 180. be able to rotate shapes using any angle or centre. So any shape, I've chosen a triangle, and we're going to rotate this shape about any point, I've chosen that point there, and I'm going to rotate it 67 degrees about A. The only thing I've missed out is the direction, so we'll go clockwise. Now my felt tip is a little thick, so we'll do this in pencil. And the first thing you do is draw lines from your centre rotation through each of the vertices of the shape. So it doesn't matter how many sides the shape's got, you start off by drawing a line through the centre rotation through each of the vertices of the shape. We're then going to rotate each of these lines clockwise the angle of 67 degrees. So with a protractor on the centre rotation and along the line that we're going to rotate let's go around 67 degrees that means to say that line rotates round to become here now let's take the next line centre of the protractor on the centre rotation along the line and measure 67 degrees and then draw in that line So that line has moved round to there. Now lastly, let's move this line 67 degrees as well. Now, we need to measure this point here and put it up its appropriate line. And the same with the others, which we could do with a ruler, but it's actually easier with a pair of compasses. So if we put a pair of compasses in the centre rotation, we can then move that point quite literally round to its new position which is there. Then we can take this point and move it 
round to its new position there and take the last point and move it to its new position there. Then join up new positions of the vertices of the triangle and we have rotated it 67 degrees as required. Now let's do an enlargement of any shape with a centre of enlargement anywhere you like. So let's put our centre of enlargement there and we proceed the same way as with the rotation. We draw lines through each of the vertices of the shape that we're going to enlarge. Now appreciate that when you enlarge by a scale factor of half what in fact is going to happen is the shape is going to become smaller and in mathematical terms we still call that an enlargement. An enlargement by scale factor of half in fact makes the shape sides all a half as long. Now to do that we measure the distance from the centre enlargement to the vertex that we're looking at and halve that distance. Measure from the centre enlargement to the vertex we're looking at and halve that distance. Measure from the centre of enlargement to the vertex of the shape that we're moving and then halve that distance. And then we have enlarged the shape by scale factor of half. All the sides are half as long as they were. To enlarge a shape by a fractional scale factor has the effect of making the shape go smaller. To find the volume of any prism. This is a triangular ended prism. This is a circular ended prism, otherwise known as a cylinder. And this is an L shape ended prism. And the volume of any prism is exactly the same formula. It's the area of the end of the prism multiplied by how long the prism is. Or if the prism was standing upright it would be the area of the end times the height. So if we want to find the volume of this prism, first off we need to find the area of this triangle. Because it's a right angled triangle, the area of the triangle is half the base, which is 3, multiplied by the height, which is 4. So that will give me the area of the end, and then I multiply that by how long the prism is. And all these prisms are 10 centimetres long. So therefore this will work out the volume of this prism. 3 fourths of 12, half of 12 is 6, 6 times 10 is 60, and the answer is going to be square centimetres. Now let's look at the volume of this prism. We need to remember that the area of the end is the area of a circle, and the area of a circle is pi r squared, we're meant to know that. So the area of the end of this is pi r squared, and then multiply it by the length. So it's pi multiplied by, now be careful, we want the radius. And this diagram is showing the diameter. So then we have to do a little bit of thinking. The radius must be 3, so it's 3 squared times 10. So that will be 9 times 10, 90 times pi on the calculator would give you the volume of this circular ended prism or cylinder. Now let's find the volume of this prism. We need to find the area of this end piece. Now that's the area of an L shape. So if I split it into two rectangles, I find the area of this rectangle, I find the area of this rectangle, and add those two areas together, I'll have the area of the L shape. This first rectangle is 3 by 6, so 3 6 is 18. The area of this rectangle is if that's 3 and that's 5, that must be 2. So the area of this rectangle is 2 times 3, so that's 6. So add those two together, we'll give you the area of the end, and then multiply it by the length, which we said is 10 for all of them, 
So the volume of this prism is 240 cubic centimetres.